So in a moment, Matt is going to share his screen and we are going to look at three different podcasts doing a live review. And we're going to cover five areas, podcast brand, the description, show quality, marketing, and calls to action. Now, you know, Matt and I have had a, a bit of a peek at things beforehand because we want to be prepared, but I think there's also going to be a lot of candid, <laughs> candid reactions as well. And the goal today is to give you a lot of constructive feedback um, that everyone can apply to your show, whether you already have one or you have one in the works. And for, you know, the podcasters who have graciously put their hands up and volunteered their shows, um, we want to give you feedback you can use right away. And just speaking to those three individuals for a moment, thank you so much for volunteering your shows. I, you know, I would say there's, there is a great opportunity here to get feedback, but it's also not a small thing to have your content reviewed in public because no matter what we're creating and no matter what the topic is, it's always personal to us. So thank you for the trust. Matt, with that, do you want to jump in? Yeah. So uh, I just want everybody to know this is going to be a little bit more raw, uh, mostly because I, I just want to make sure that I'm able to switch between all of the different links and screens that we have. And so you are going to see the Canva presentation, uh, which is what Jessica builds. But just very quickly, for those of you who don't know, Jessica produces the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. She's been here for seven years. Um, and and you all know me as the the, you know, your friendly neighborhood podcasting expert. And that's what we're going to dive into. In fact, something that Jessica and I can have talked about, and I really like for feedback uh, from all of you is, is we were talking about maybe even doing this monthly, uh, doing a live podcast review, whether we do it on LinkedIn Live or we do it here on webinars, just so that you all can submit your shows and we can give you a really, it's more like a, not a 30,000 foot view, but a 10,000 foot view uh, of what's going on and what you can do to get better. So if you like that idea, uh, go ahead and put that in the chat uh, or or message me at matt at proudmouth.com or, or jessica at jessica at proudmouth.com. That would be fantastic. All right. So our first victim <laughs> is, is Ryan Canfield. So uh, I, I did have the pleasure of actually meeting Ryan in person at Future Proof. Uh, he is a member of our Pod Rocket Influence Academy. He built all of this based off of the training uh, that we have in the academy and coming to office hours, which is now called Ask an Expert. And so we're going to dive into some of this stuff uh, right right out of the gate. And so, um, Jessica, you know what? I I think I actually didn't click on everything I needed. To Welcome hear. to the now. Oh, be hold on a second. I need to go to Apple. I'm sorry. Yep, I need to go to Apple Podcasts because we're going to review this one. There we go. Hmm. Do do do. Okay. So do you do you want to start? Because this was the big thing that I, I think we were going to chat about was his this yeah. part here let's start from the top with the brand so it's called and even with yeah starting with the name now and beyond podcast we have a few categories of different po podcast names the one we would probably put this one is in the, the category i would place this in is intrigue because when you first read it you're not totally sure what it's about who it's for and that's okay because Ryan has done something very wise. If we scroll down to his graphic, which I think is just a bit lower, it's hard to see it on this page, but he has um, a subheading here, balancing enjoyment and financial well-being. So you get, okay, this is a financial podcast. Matt, what do you think about his name now and beyond? Yeah. So first off, uh, if if you really, if you go back and forth between the, the Victus Wealth Management logo and, you know, what we're seeing here, I, I actually, I think the fonts are fantastic. I think the, the, um, I think his picture is very good. Uh, I love the fonts here and I love this. The thing that I'm really struggling with is this here. So I don't know if it's just because I'm mostly colorblind or not, but I have a really hard time reading this. And actually, if you go to different um, like we went on Spotify as we were practicing this, um, that gets lighter and light or dark, uh, darker and darker. So you can't see it. So I would throw this back into Canva or something. And I would really try to make this pop more. Um, I would make this just brighter. Uh, I, and I don't actually know how to do that because I'm not a Canva expert, uh, but that is definitely something that, that I would, I would focus on. I agree. Bigger text, maybe even a little bit bolder. Cause I also find that just a little tough to read, but that's yeah. an easy fix. Yeah, easy, easy, easy fix. fix. So yeah. but you had you had made a couple of comments about this. So let's talk about the description of the show. Okay. 
I really like this first sentence. We have, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but welcoming, welcoming us to the podcast, who it's for, it's an ultimate podcast for professionals and what they are looking for. So great, succinct first line there. I am curious though, maybe, maybe Brian is being broad with professionals for a reason, but is it possible to be more specific with that audience? Because if I came across this podcast, I, I wouldn't be, you know, I'm a professional, but I'm not sure is, is this for me? I would almost need to have a side conversation with Ryan to really know that for sure. So more specificity, if possible. Matt, do you have any points on that? Yes. I, I mean, you and I have, you know, beaten this, uh, you know, into the ground into a pulp, then reformed it and then beat it again, uh, because it's just so important so that your audience very quickly knows. And especially if they're searching for podcasts for a very specific professional niche, this would give you that opportunity. Now, one of the other things that you and I talked about uh, before is I'd like this to say, welcome to the now and beyond podcast hosted by Ryan, right? That would be, I would love that. Like, where's Ryan? You yeah. know, it's an educational podcast. Um, it's one of those tricky topics. Not, you know, not everyone really wants to hear about. We need that introduction and warmth of knowing who Ryan is. And even, you know, why is he qualified to be our guide? What unique perspective does he bring? So I think those two tweaks to your audience and introducing Ryan to this would make such a difference. But there's a great foundation to build upon here. Yeah. What, one last thing on this, in, in this right here, I would actually put in, actually this right here, I would make those in bullet points uh, instead of having them be a sentence because they are very long run on these sentences. Uh, I like the content there and I know, we know why you did this, Ryan, uh, why you put this here in the way, because this is another one of those search engine optimization components. All right. So, so now we're going to jump into the show specifically. All right. Actually, I can just do it here. So this, this is where I'm going to get super nerdy and I want all of you guys to just be aware of Matt's nerdiness here. So <laughs> number one, this is what I want you to focus on. 47, 57, 18, 19, 23. All right. Something that audiences like, and we have a lot of research that backs this is a consistent length of show. So for instance, if you know, you're exercising, you know that you're going to exercise for 30 minutes, you want a 30 minute show. If you know that it, when we know this, it takes, you know, roughly 30 minutes for most people to commute. It takes most people 30 minutes to prepare dinner. Uh, and it also takes about people about 30 minutes to get ready in the morning. So if you do an 18 minute show, I've got 12 minutes what am I going to do with that 12 minutes? Uh, and then the other end of the spectrum is the 57 minute podcast. Goodness gracious. Um, that's so freaking long. Now there's some really good content in here. Um, but what we recommend that you do is you turn that into two shows, right? So you do a part one and a part two, try to keep it to 30 minutes tight. Jessica, you got feelings about that? No, okay. I mean, good feelings. I agree. Part one, part two. All right. Point. So we're going to get this plan. Beyond Podcast, Can you hear hosted it? by Ryan Canfield, mm -hmm. founder and president of Victus Wealth Management. Whether you're seeking financial freedom, investment insights, or simply looking to optimize your lifestyle, tune in for conversations that empower you to achieve a balance between enjoying the present and ensuring a resilient financial future. Yes, I spent Welcome that. to a podcast where the art of living well today intersects with the science of planning for a brighter tomorrow. Okay, so first off, his, his tagline's right there in the intro, and I definitely like that, but we're going to continue. Hey everyone, on this episode, I interview Noah Snyder, a millennial entrepreneur who owns a local gym named Arc Fitness. I have known Noah for years and his story is extremely inspiring. We discuss so many different things, such as the challenges he faced starting his gym, why it's important to surround yourself with other like-minded individuals and establish a community for support, why investing in your health is the number one investment you can make, and so much more. If you want to follow Noah's journey, his links are in the show notes. I hope you enjoy this episode. All right, Jessica? Oh yeah. yeah. So uh, Candace, um, I sped that up. Uh, I was, I sped it up to 1.5 times speed. I just wanted to get through it. Cause we got a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, Jessica before. Uh, so, so tell, tell me what, tell me where you're at and then I'll chime in. I have, I'm making that noise because I've, I've mixed feelings about these opens where they are, where the host is essentially giving you a recap of the episode. I think I understand why, because they are giving the value up front but it just feels a little bit too, almost too much like he's reading, which, you know, given the amount of information he's presenting, 
maybe it kind of has to, but I, I don't, I want it to feel a little more casual and, and conversational. And I want, I want to get right into things. Yeah. Yeah. A, a minute eight before we have anything okay. of real substance here. So, um, okay. Uh, so professional intro thumbs up, right? Uh, it was actually, it was good. It, again, I think it was a little long, uh, but it wasn't too bad. It was about 30 seconds, which is what intros can be. Um, but if you're going to have a professional intro, you want to dive into stuff uh, pretty quickly. Now we're going to listen to some of the episode. Uh, Part-time at the desk. And that was my first kind of exposure to the, the gym and fitness world. And I loved it, but at the same time, I identified so many things wrong with it. You know, just the way the gyms treated people like, like a number and, you know, we're really just, it, it can be. Okay. Sound quality. So this is his guest. Sound quality is fantastic, right? Super clear. Uh, just, just, there's no echo. There's no anything, which by the way, I'm going to be bringing up in another uh, episode here in a, uh, a little bit later. Of course, if we wanted to, to, to go after him, but like I knew in my, in my gut, that was not the right option. And so we stepped away for a little bit, but that Okay, and I'm going to get super finicky here because one, he's been talking for a really long time here. So Ryan, I would try to interject a little bit more, but also there's lip smacking, right? So there's the sounds, which by the way, can be taken out very, very quickly in post-production. Not very, not not difficult to do at all. Uh, that's one of those sounds. And I don't know if it's just Matt that I get annoyed by that, but um, I'm not a huge fan of, of mouth noises. And that's something I would take out in post-production. All right, I'm trying to find Ryan here. And that is, by the way, with very little financial resources uh, of furniture. So I helped him sell this is worth it to me. Pay from trying to become an entrepreneur. Um, and they just would have ran away. You know, they probably would have went back to the nine to five job, like you said. And, you know, so like what you and Hannah did, you know, I, I, I've talked about this. Okay, Jessica, what am I going to say there? You know? No, because. I was just enjoying like, oh, he's so like approachable oh. and personable. I wasn't in, in the nerdiness. Yeah. He said, you know, in that 10 second oh. clip, he said, you know, three times. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. You have to know what your go-to words are, everybody. Uh, his, so he's using filler words. So Ryan, when you're in, I, I think he's here. I'm just talking to him like he's here. Um, when you're using uh, filler words, there's a reason for it. it. It's because you don't necessarily have the confidence or you're not giving your brain time to catch up. So, hey, Ryan is here. Yay. Thanks, brother. Um, so I use so just did it. Uh, transition words are, are very difficult to take out of your vernacular. This is the most difficult thing you can do as a professional podcaster is learn what your go-to words are. And we have a wonderful solve for that. Right by your camera, or just within eyesight, write down the go-to word on a yellow sticky note and say, don't say, you know, don't say so. This way you can start practicing. The other thing that you can do is you can punish yourself out of this in post-production. You really can, because you can dump this into audacity and every time you see a, you know, um, oh, you know, something like that, you can put it into uh, another audio file and just see how many times you say that. Uh, you can also use Descript. Descript is a wonderful transcription service where you can search the transcript and you can find out exactly how many times you're, you're saying something. Um, but I want to go back, Jessica, to what you said there. Ryan has a warmth about him, right? There's something that just is in his voice that is very approachable. And I think this is such a great podcast, even though it's too long, because Ryan and this person, Noah, they're friends, right? And when you have people who you have a relationship with on the show, it just changes the tenor of the show. Now, as you continue to evolve in your podcasting journey or your interviewing journey, um, your goal is to make everybody feel that way and everybody sound that way. Uh, and, and that takes a little while to do that, but this is this such a warm, warm, wonderful example, uh, you know, of that. So I'm going to go toward the end here. Okay. If there was one piece of advice that you could give, you know, the younger generation millennials, 
who are nervous to start a business, what would that be? Mm. Well, I would say. All right. I'm going to pause on that too very quickly because there's a huge and powerful thing that Ryan decided not to do in post-production that made whatever Noah's about to say even more powerful. He left in that very small amount of space. Silence, space, giving your, uh, your guest the chance to process and show your audience and have them hear that processing is freaking humongous. So I love that. All right, we got to get to YouTube now. Are you ready? Mm -hmm, do, I'm do, ready. Do, 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 Matt, do, speaking, do. speaking of space, when it comes to filler words, I my one of my words is or phrases is you know, mm -hmm. and I think I say it because I feel this pressure to oh I, I if I'm talking I need to always be talking, but by slowing myself down and sometimes pausing, I found that's helped me to say those words less. So I'd recommend it, that. It really is practice. That's that's the 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 big. That's the big thing. Um, one of the other things that happened, I'm sorry, that we were going to play in the podcast, but I'm just going to paraphrase it so we can continue to move, was at the end and at the beginning, Ryan said, go to the links in the show notes in order for you to find out information about Noah. Um, that's a double-edged sword, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more with the other shows, but it is difficult because if I'm listening to a podcast and I'm doing something else, which we know is when most people are listening to podcasts, the probability of me going back to the show notes are very low. So in the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast, we make them say it out loud. Go to VictusWealthManagement.com. Go to Noah'sGym.com. And you say it out loud or follow Noah on Instagram at Noah's Gym. You know, at Noah's Gym. That's a much better way to do it. And then if they go to the show notes, because they you planted that seed, that's a that's pretty good. All right, Jess, you want to jump into YouTube here? Yeah. yeah. Just to say it's so great to see Ryan having a, a presence on YouTube in general, but having a podcast presence because it, YouTube really is that number one search engine now for podcasts. And Matt, can we just click on one of the podcast videos really quickly? Oh, yeah, and Welcome to another episode of the Now and Beyond podcast. Today, I'm excited to be joined by Kelly Augsburger, who is a long-term care insurance. Really identify. Do you remember so why we did that? Um, I just actually, could you scroll down? I just want to see what we have here. And yeah, more. Okay. Something that's working really well here is I really like that Ryan has all of these timestamps that makes it so easy for people to jump to wherever they want to go in the conversation. And especially we have a lengthy conversation here. You know, we'd love for them to listen to the whole thing. Maybe they won't just let people get, you know, what they want from the episode. I think that's great for next steps. I'd love to see Ryan, you know, actually Ryan and his guest, you know, live like video on the, on the podcast or on YouTube. And I, I have a feeling, you know, maybe that's, that's in the works, but Great to see them here. Well, Hello. and so that's and that's what uh, that's what I was actually looking for here. Uh, is is so he's doing the shorts, right? Which which we YouTube shorts. If you guys aren't doing YouTube shorts, you're missing. I look at this four hundred and seventeen views. Um, you know, surprisingly, like I mean, his titles are fantastic. There's all sorts of great great things that are happening here. Um, with his titling, with with the the captioning, of course that that image there, the thumbnail's not great. The thumbnail's not great there, but goodness gracious, uh, you know, he's really getting some traction. But what we're finding is our clients are getting anywhere from 10 to 20 times the amount of views on their YouTube shorts than they are on their actual long form podcast. But I'm, uh, Oh, he said, I, Ryan just said, I actually recorded both interviews as a video, but was intimidating with the editing of it. Okay. So don't edit it. Just have it go raw, man. Uh, raw video is entirely fine on, on YouTube. Uh, they will absolutely watch it. It, it works incredibly well. Um, and so, yeah. Okay. So now we actually have to get to social media. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Let's pop over to Facebook. I want to look at, it could be this post, Matt, or we can look at the other. Yeah, we'll graphic, look at the other one. Keeping in line with the other right episode. Yep. Okay. 
shout out to Chris Levesque on our team. He's been talking to me so much about visuals and I really appreciate it. And one of those points is hierarchy where whatever is biggest on the graphic, that's what we tend to read first. And in this case, it's the podcast title, it's the episode title, and then it's the quote. But really, we want the quote to be the most prominent part because that's what's showing people like the, you know, the gems. I said, you know, again, but that's what's showing people the gems that are, you know, coming out of these episodes. So that's an easy fix is just changing up the sizing. And then for the actual copy in the post itself, Matt, could you scroll up and then see more? It is okay. I, I really like that he credentializes the guest here, one of the best millennial entrepreneurs in, this, in that area. I love that. Something that I'd, I'd really like to see is pulling some information right out of the podcast and putting it in the post here. What, for example, what were you know Noah's biggest recommendations for entrepreneurs? Really, really do what Spark Toro is recommending and create zero click content so that people don't have to click somewhere else in order to get information. Matt, what do you think? Um, I, I absolutely agree. I wanted to bring up Ryan's um, uh, uh, um, LinkedIn because one of the things that I think is happening here is if you look at the activity, right, with, with this Facebook page, right, one comment, which was him, we're just not getting any traction here. Like, look at this. And these are good posts, right? <laughs> I love this so much. Why I am the way I am. I just, that's one of the best titles I've seen. But then you go to Ryan's LinkedIn, right? Um, thank goodness gracious. Um, look at this five comments, one repost. This, this did, I'm assuming, pretty well for him too. You know, 11 people liked this comment, four comments. So I think the big picture question that we all have to ask is, are we producing the content in the right media where our ideal clients are? And, and Ryan, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but, but you, you are going for professionals and I understand that you need to have a Facebook page and I, you're probably just posting all at the same time. And I'm hoping you're using a posting tool for that. Um, but this is where your ideal client is. Uh, this is where you need to spend your time and your money. Um, yeah, okay, so he says Facebook is just kind of there. Um, this is where you need to spend your time and your money. And by the way, this is another perfect example of a great post, right? Look look at this, look at this uh, hook. Man, I'm right tired of feeling like you're living paycheck to paycheck. More, yeah, hell yeah, I'm gonna click more, right? And I'm also gonna listen to the video. All right, well, we spent 24 minutes on, well, 20 minutes on Ryan. We need to go to the next one. You ready? Ryan, so here's the deal. I think you're doing a great freaking job. These are all small moves. Um, make, making sure, you know, tweaking your graphic, maybe bullet pointing the the, the description of your show, um, making sure that you pop that the the subtext for your show from the graphic, fix, clean up those umso socios, and then publish the full videos are the big things that I would uh, I would do. Jessica, do you have anything else you want to add for Ryan? That was an excellent recap and uh, okay, keep up beautiful. the great work, Ryan. All right. So here's the other one. So we had another willing victim here. Her name is Meredith uh, Sh uh, Schneider. Uh, she is a certified financial planner. And this is her podcast page. Jessica, would you like to start with this one? Yes. And when Meredith volunteered her podcast, I believe she called it somewhat of a podcast. So I'm just, I'm just really curious to see what Meredith is, is creating here. And what I noticed just as an outsider coming in, first of all, that this is called Meredith Minute, but it's many minutes. You know, <laughs> it's it's around twenty. It's around twenty four minutes. So I do I do wonder if that is the right title for this. And then, looking at the description, I like that we have a bit of footing here. We know it's episode three as part of a series with wealth counselors. We have the guest name at least, but I would like a little bit more context. Who is the guest? Who is the audience? And why is this conversation so meaningful to them? And who is Meredith? Because we know, we know that Meredith is posting 
about this podcast on LinkedIn, maybe that's where she's driving her the most traffic from. We can't count on those people necessarily knowing who Meredith is or knowing, you know, exactly what, what her role is. Those are my first impressions. Yeah. Okay. So you're being very nice and I appreciate that. Now I get to be the mean person here and Meredith, please understand this is coming from a place of love. It really truly is. Uh, n- n- number one, this isn't a podcast, right? It's actually a video because it doesn't really exist outside of the website as a podcast. What we would recommend that you do is you take this 24 minutes, you pull the audio specifically and turn it into an actual show that's going to be posted everywhere. Now, and this is this this is the other thing I don't understand. I don't understand your background. Um, I, I don't. And, and I would have given um, this uh, Marilyn some feedback because look at all of this space right? Uh, she needs to get closer to the camera. There are some, some things here that I would have, as a, as a professional recording, I, I would have asked her to do that. But I don't understand the background here. And it changes too, which makes little sense to me either. Um, if you wanted to use the virtual background, which by the way, we've heard repeatedly from lots of different video uh, experts, not just in financial services, but outside of financial services, you got to can the virtual background. Um, Unless it's unbelievably clean and consistent where you are going to have your logo, like the Schneider Wealth Management should be over here because your head is covering a little bit of it. Uh, It also is white on the background. It'd be great if you actually made that, um, what is that called? A PNG, PNG or whatever it is where, where it actually would 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 not have the white background. Uh, there's just a couple of those tweaky things that, that I would really do. Um, and, and again, I agree. I, I think this is this is it's tight, it's clean, but I want more information, especially because this is on your website, um, which means that I could go ahead, right? And I could I could click on these different things to find out more and more about you. But again, Anytime I have to click, the numbers are insane on how many, how many fewer things that you have. All right. So Mm -hmm. we're going to, um, we're just going to play this so you guys can hear. Hello. Today I am joined by Marilyn Wechter, a wealth counselor and financial therapist. And I'm really excited to talk with you today. Um, Why don't we just start off by having you share a little bit about how you got started in this area? Well, I went into private practice in 1980 doing psychotherapy. And I worked with lots of adolescents and adults and my practice tended to be a very wealthy practice and issues. Okay. I love the fact that she jumps right into it. She jumps right into it. Uh, uh, There's no filler there at all. There's no professional intro. She just dives, dives right in. And I don't know if you all can hear it. Um, but if you listen very closely, there's like rave music playing underneath her. Uh, and it's for the whole show and every show. I, I don't understand. I don't understand. Um, I, I want to hear the conversation between both of them. And it's pretty distracting now that you know it's there. Up. And I had somebody say to me that she was going to give her 16-year-old son a brand new Hummer. You can hear it. It just it takes me away from listening to the guest specifically. Now there's another thing that, you, but here's, here's what I think Meredith is doing very, very well. Look where her eyes are. This is difficult. And many of you know this, she's looking at the camera. She's not looking at the guest on her screen, even though when she was introducing Mer- Marilyn, she was looking away, which is totally fine because you could see that it was important to Meredith to introduce Marilyn correctly. And I absolutely love that, but you got to cut the music, the underlying music. Um, I just, that's that it's distracting. Um, But here we go. 24 minutes. Let's look at some of these other ones, right? Uh, Actually, we'll go to YouTube for this. Um, Oh, that's the other thing. Look at this picture. This is such an amazing picture of her. I love how this makes me feel. It's so engaging. I love her smile. And you look, there, there it is again, right? I just want Meredith's personality to come out more and more because she's so engaging. She just mm-hmm. draws you into the content. And I absolutely love it. Now, there's another thing, Jessica, I'm going to turn this over to you here. There's some things on this YouTube page that are just absolutely fantastic. 
cool that we have the clear audience Yay! right at the top. Yeah. So now it's just tying tying that in everywhere. Whenever you post about your podcast on social media, who is this for on the podcast page? Who is it for? Never assume that people know. They might know, and that's fine. You're reminding them. You're reinforcing it. But really, the idea, too, is to reach new people who don't know. <laughs> this is the other thing. Look at these numbers. She has two subscribers, two subs, 36 videos, 10,000 views. That's bazonkos, right? I mean, that's just absolutely fantastic. Um, see, she's got a different background here, right? I, mm -hmm. I'm just, if we kind of go through these, but, you know, she, this is a nice, super duper short one. So Meredith does something that a lot of other people don't do, which is she creates her own shorts like this. And if we play this, this is, it's only two. So minutes. financial planning, investments, money, numbers, really blah, right? Well, as we all probably really know, money is often in tied with emotion. And so it's actually quite a in-depth experience when I work with clients. In fact, many a tear has been shed in my presence. Okay. Oh my God. Look, she's making appropriate eye contact and she's looking away to break contact because when she brings her eye contact back, it just makes you feel even more engaged. I don't understand what this is down in the corner. I have a feeling that that's the brand name of the background that she's using. I don't think that makes her look as professional. And then there's the music again. So that under music. So Meredith, your voice is so wonderful. Just leave your voice. Just have it be just you. Um but if you look at this, here's another thing, right? She's got another keyword, divorce. It, she just What she just talked about there, within 19 seconds, she's hooked me because, oh my God, you, you've, a many a tear has been shed in my office. I, I, just, I love that. What a wonderful phrase and what a good idea. Um, and it just, I think that's absolutely fantastic. Jess, do you have anything else on YouTube before we go to her socials? Meredith's presence. She has such a genuine, authentic presence. I have a feeling that if I were to talk to Meredith, this this is exactly what yeah. I'm getting, and I and I really really like that. And I, I'm I'm just so happy to see her on putting herself on video because that could be really really intimidating. And I'm hoping she takes that next step to put everything in audio because her her audience, Matt, they're super busy people. Yeah, chances are they're going to be listening to her podcast during the day rather than watching. But even with it being on YouTube, that is, that is a great move too, because they'll just, they'll listen to it in the background. So that's awesome to see. So here, here's another opportunity here. We're just checking her socials here. And I think the thing that is, that is frustrating here uh, is, is that she doesn't seem to be getting a substantial amount of transact uh, 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 interaction something happened here. We talk about this often uh, that you have to put the social in social media. So Sonia, who I, I'm assuming they're, they're friends. She likes the show that's insightful Meredith. And I love the, the, the title, which is absolutely true. By the way, this should be, you know, what a, again, beautiful title, very, very well done, but what Meredith should have done and by the way, depending on your compliance, uh, you can do this. And, and one of the most compliant ways to interact with your social media without getting yourself in trouble is to just to say, thank you, Sonia. So what you're doing is you're pleasing the algorithm, which means that when people start reading the comments, which they do, they're on the page longer, which allows LinkedIn to sell more ads. That's the game that we're playing. And so I would have liked to have seen Meredith say, and I don't know, who who Sonia is? Uh, well, she's I'm a, maybe an accountant. Uh, reduce their tax mm -hmm. bills. The AFSP. I don't know what that is. Um, so, be and if she isn't a client, which I'm assuming she is not, interacting with her a little bit more. And the same thing with whoever this dude is, right? Uh, so this guy liked it. You can start the conversation by tagging that person and saying, "Hey." James, thanks for liking the post. What did you like? You all have to prime this pump, everybody. The pump isn't going to prime itself. And this is how you win on social, which when we actually get to um, uh, 
Jane and Manasseh's podcast, which we're going to get to in just a minute, I'm going to show you some pretty substantial contrast in what we've seen from, from Ryan and what we've seen from Meredith to, to really where uh, Jane is specifically. Do you have anything else that you want to chat about with this or do you are you ready to go ahead and move on? I was wondering, do we have a minute just to listen to the clip? Yes. I want to play it. You made a comment that I, I thought was so profound, even though it seems obvious in um, upon reflection, which is uh, when people don't talk about money, which often many people slash families don't do, the fact of not talking about it sort of implies that there's maybe something secretive or something that shouldn't be talked about. And I never really thought about the implications of lack of talking. That's a really interesting way of positioning it. Well, you know, if, if people have more difficulty talking about money than they have talking about sex. You know, it, it's really staggering, but anything we don't talk about or don't name takes on more power. Do you want to add anything to that? Yes. <laughs> that last part was the gold. That anything we don't talk about, about or name, we give it more power. That needs a little more attention. That needs to come up in the copy of the post. And yep. that video, while I appreciated seeing Meredith as an interviewer, the question took up a lot of space. And I don't think it really served the audience that well what I would do is actually put that question in the copy the post copy itself tighten it up a little bit and then give Marilyn more space I mean to her credit she left she left on a cliffhanger where I I want to learn more mm -hmm. but I'm I'm scrolling on social media I'm busy I don't know if I'm going to go to the full conversation I really want all the gems without leaving the platform well and that's i think that's the other big issue here is so you hook me with people have more difficulty talking about money than they have talking about sex bam so you know what oh my god what is who's this maryland lady she's freaking awesome yeah, i have no place there. to click yeah yeah there's no place for me to actually click to listen to the episode to actually go to meredith's website so that you can start seeing the traffic and interaction from it but um right so I think I think uh, to summarize Meredith very quickly is Meredith your your voice is amazing your your sincerity is really apparent cut the music uh, tweak the background turn these into actual audio only podcasts including the video podcast really shoot for that thirty minute but keep doing the YouTube shorts keep posting on LinkedIn but lastly just make sure you're interacting with the people on LinkedIn when they like share or comment on your post all right here we go it's our last one we got we're in the home stretch everybody do you want to start with this yeah okay so Jane and Manessa yep let's just look at it from a branding perspective we have the name of the podcast the international money podcast if we were to categorize that, I would put, I would probably put that in the niche call out totally. you know, the, that international money. I'm like, Ooh, I'm, I'm keying into that. And then this headline here, we have that value proposition. Here's, you know, here's what we're solving for our audience. We're filtering out the noise. We have our hosts and I just, I really like, what do you call that? Like a coffee stain? I know. I, I, know. I love that so much. That is so delightful. So I, I really, I really like the tie-in to the gold, global aspect and, and the cafe. Okay, let's have a look about, okay. I, I really have no doubt who the audience is here. And I'm impressed by how succinct this is as well. Like doing so much in a small space. The only thing, if you scroll up, Matt, again, that I paused at looking at this earlier was it gets into join us as we navigate. I just wasn't sure about the utility of that sentence. It seems very similar to what came mm -hmm. up. Of. I don't know that it's adding anything, but then I thought, oh, maybe it's a call to action. In that case, I, I might place it a little bit farther down under all episodes. Yeah. That's my only point there. I think we could do without it or moved. Okay. I, I actually would replace this with that myself. 
um, or, or even just put this down here. Um, all right. Yeah. What else you got? These episode titles. <laughs> look, look how searchable they are, but they don't scream like keywords or SEO. They, they still have personality. Mm-hmm. For example, strings stronger than steel. Mm. You know, your episode titles don't need to be beautiful, but <laughs> I think that is a beautiful little line right there. And then we still have the aging parents abroad. So there's no ambiguity about what the topic is. What do yeah. you think about these titles? Well, so I, I'd like it to be branded that again, you know, I wanted to say International Money Cafe somewhere, or at least this the coffee stain thing uh, on each of those. I'd love that just because I think it looks fantastic. Um, you could also go ahead and do what they do in a couple of other places, which is put Jane and Manasseh's pictures here. But, but again, there, bam. So, so if you're going to build a podcast page, this is your template. Every, besides the couple of tweaky things that Jessica was just saying, um, I also want this above the episodes because I want people, because if you'd look at how that would flow, Here's the podcast. Here's what the podcast is about. Here's who we are. And then here are the episodes. I would change that up. Great pictures. Um, just, I, and I love how clear and succinct um, their, their messages are here on who they are and what they do. Um, and then you can, of course, click more, which again, I want people to go ahead and click more. Um, and then look, look what's here. Yay! Owned audience. Heck yeah. Go Jane. Go Manas. That's fantastic. Uh, and if I scroll to the bottom, if I'm your ideal client, of course, I'm going to ask for our free guide. Uh, because th- by the way, just so all of you know, this is a huge gap. Uh, very few people talk to these incredibly high earner expats. Um, it's so, so, so good. Um, I, I absolutely love it. I think, and they even, from a graphic design standpoint, they did such a good job with the pictures um, because I'm assuming those weren't actually taken together with them standing next to each other. But even if they were, well, well, well done. All right, let's go to YouTube. Matt, sorry, can I make one point on that other page? Yeah. Just watching a word here says they are leading experts revolutionizing cross-border financial, and then goes on, revolutionizing I'm sure that's the right word choice there. And the only reason I'm picking on that is because it moves them, in my mind, a little further away from their value proposition. If they're revolutionizing, they're radically changing how this advice is given. I'm sure that's true. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm just not sure that that's the reason why their audience wants to listen to the podcast. Where really seems to be, it's about, helping people demystify, I'm just putting that word in there, decode mm-hmm. the challenges. So I would just, I would stick with that whenever you're talking about what your podcast is about, even if it feels like you're being repetitive, keep reiterating that. And you can put it in different words. As you start to get people reviewing their podcast, you can get inspired by how other people talk about your podcast and use yeah. their words. That's very powerful. But yeah. One point there. All right. Well, we're going to go to home here because. Hello. All right. Very consistent here. Not entirely the same language, but because this here is probably even better than what's there. Um, I like this, but I would love the, I, I just, this, this graphic design filter or this graphic design is just so good. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see that continue over here uh, to, to the, to the YouTube page. Um, all right. So we're, I actually already have this up. Receipt of certain gifts, large gifts or bequests from certain foreign persons. How would you file this? This would need to be paper filed. So you complete all the information on this form, and then you have to mail this to a different address to the IRS. All right. I'm going to get technical here with you, Manasa. Well, by the way, that's Manasa. That's not Jane. Um, There's some audio issues with your microphone, and I don't know what mic you're using, um, but there's there's like a little bit of a hollowness sound to, to it. 
Um, she's using a Yeti, Jessica. Man, Manasa, I really liked you. Uh, sorry. So you need to burn that microphone and throw it away. It's one of the worst microphones for podcasting. I don't know why everybody uses it. You need a directional condenser microphone. I'm sorry, Manasa. I'm really not trying to be mean. You just really, that's one of those things that I'm not a big fan of. Um, just get a directional condenser microphone. In fact, um, uh, in the Pod Rocket Academy, which I know you guys are in, uh, it, we actually have the the Samson microphone that I would recommend because you also your T's here certain foreign persons. So your T's and your S's are actually getting overmodulated, and that's the microphone that is not your speech patterns, and that will make you sound so much better. What, what a directional condenser microphone does is it makes you sound warm. It doesn't make you sound so tinny. And that's exactly what the Yeti microphone and many, many microphones like that. And I could get super specific with you on why the ribbons on the inside do that, which you don't want to know any of that, but it's really important. Um, and I know you are both upping your game consistently because of the comment that you just said, that you'd be changing everything over as of October 1st. Let's just upgrade your microphone. The Samson microphone is like 60 bucks. Uh, both of you need to buy the same microphone so you sound the same, uh, but that that's something that that I would absolutely do. Um, anyway, Jess, do you got anything about that? Or it's because I'd like to get to social before, uh, before we run out of time. I only have one point about their shorts. Oh, shorts, Wait. got it. I'll go back. Do, 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 do. Okay love that they're doing shorts there is an opportunity here to change up the titles i see they're aligning the short with the episode that it's derived from we see episode 25 like mana from the heavens which is so fun what i would recommend because we see from the graphic that it's it's from a podcast what i would recommend is using that space a little bit more strategically by posing the question that the YouTube shorts is about to answer and be very, well, you're both good at this already. Be very, very specific about who the audience is and exactly what question you're answering from or answering. Matt, do you have anything to add there? No, just keep doing the shorts, keep doing the shorts, keep doing the shorts, right? And so the, mm. the fun part about the shorts here is, is there, look, they're all of your episodes. It's branded very, very well. Again, I love all of that. Um, we just need to take the long form podcast and use the video because what you've done here uh, with with the, the regular videos of oh, this isn't it this is actually both of you is this one. It was my example. So you want to be I don't notified. see you. Uh, and I I I want to I want to watch both of you. If I'm going to click on a video, I don't want it to be this static image. I want it to actually be between uh, both of you guys. All right, social. Do, do, do. Some inconsistency here too. I would I would change this to the original text, um, which actually would be more like this. That's what I would actually put on YouTube or that there. Now I know that that's up here, and I understand that. Um, but I would, I want a little bit more stuff there. Uh, all of this is good. This actually should be uh, able to be a hot link. Uh, and so I would double check why that actually wasn't clickable, mm -hmm. um, there or take that out because it's here. Just a couple of things like that. Um, this is great. Look at the specialties here. Uh, this is really, really good. Um, I actually don't know how well this works because of the spacing, but and the the lack of um, anyway, I don't I don't really I don't really know. Um, but so this is the international money cap. So the 141 followers, which by the way is freaking great uh, for how niche out you guys are. But let let's go ahead and go to the posts that the international money cafe is is having here. So here's is a week ago. You guys need to increase your frequency. We've talked about that before. Two reposts. Nothing. One repost. Because here is where the magic is happening. Your personal pages. Do you need to post on the International Money Cafe? Um, I'm going to be really honest with you. Company pages suck, everybody. Nobody goes to the company pages unless they're trying to find information specifically about you. Um, and this is where everything really starts firing on all cylinders. 
And Jane, I just went to this post just because I saw this uh, and I absolutely think it's just fantastic. First off, great picture, great story, Star Wars. I mean, it's it's really uh, 20 comments, right? But then if we go here, look, we got two comments. So let's go ahead and click on that. Look, who's Sandra? But it doesn't matter. Look what Jane did. She did exactly what we are telling her to do. She didn't say anything that compliance would have an issue with. She just went ahead and responded to the comment. And she didn't even do it quickly, which is entirely fine because it's still there. She tagged it. She tagged all of that stuff. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, I, I loved, ooh, look at this one. Bam. This is, this is an interesting one though um, because... This would have been a wonderful opportunity for her to refer to the podcast, right? It's really about college stuff, right? But there, there are International Money Cafe issues or maybe clips or something that you could say something like, hey, if you want to, you know, if you want to hear more about what we believe in or how we do it, I, I would just have added a, uh, an episode here personally um, because you got so much traction. All right, Jess, I'm done. Yeah, that just reminds me of opportunities we all have when we have a podcast to look at the stories that we're sharing in our episodes and turn those into posts. Jane is a, is a is a wonderful storyteller. So I, I know that she would be absolutely amazing at that. And I know that her and Manasseh both talk about their personal experiences. I've sh I'm I'm quite sure. <laughs> They've shared those before, but I'm just like anyone in the audience. I kind of forget. I would love to see that again. Even if you two shared childhood photos, that would be so, so cool and personable. Do that on the personal page. And if you're going to maintain the business page as well, put them there too. Yeah. And anything from where either of you guys are, are, are fun are from, uh, I don't know how often you go back home if ever. Right. Uh, in fact, just very quickly and personally, <clears throat> I was talking to Jane a little while ago, cause I actually shared with her, a, a, a woman who I follow on, um, on TikTok, who's, um, anyway, uh, in, in one of the things that Jane had said was, oh my God, that looks just like the village that I came from. And my, my initial feeling was, well, I didn't know that, right? I would love to know. You guys are, this is the International you know, uh, Money Cafe podcast. Um, I want to know the international side of this too, because mm -hmm. that's going to make an even deeper connection with both of you, because both of you are from kind of different areas of the world too. And you're going to be able to attract more and more people, the more personal you all get. Um, and I, I absolutely... Oh, and Manasseh says she goes back very often. Great. Take pictures, Manasseh. Just you get every, get, and just post a living heck out of it um, yeah. on the International Money Camp. So that's one of the ways that you can start driving more and more people to your podcast and other social media platforms, even though LinkedIn really is the place to go. Uh, you know, Manasseh, you go back and you take pictures with your family, with extended family, all that, and say, you know, many of you have asked you know, well, you know, as the host of the International Money Cafe podcast, what does home look like? Here it is. Um, that's the sort of stuff that really plays incredibly well in the marketplace. All right. So as we wrap up, here's the long and the short of everything. These three people have done this entirely, well, not entirely on their own. Uh, two out of the three people uh, have uh, use the Pod Rocket Influence Academy. Uh, Jessica, do, do you have a link to that? Is there any way you could put that in the, the chat? Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't have that up in handy. Um, <clears throat> so you can do this yourself. Uh, uh, Jane and Manasa figured all of this out through the Pod Rocket Influence Academy. Uh, Ryan has done it through the Pod Rocket Influence Academy. We teach you every single solitary thing you need to know in order to do the show yourself. Um, but... If you want to have somebody do it for you, this is what we do all day long, every day for our clients. And we would absolutely love to have you. If you go ahead and just use your phone, scan this QR code, you can get time on my calendar directly. I'm more than happy to do this, uh, to, to have a conversation to see if we are the right fit. Um, we are not for everybody because what we do is so high touch, high volume and such high customization. Okay. Uh, 
but maybe you have a conversation with me and the academy is where you really fit in. We would love to have you join. Um, but we would also love to have the opportunity to really do this for you. So, you know, when Jane and Manasa start making money hands over fist, I'm really hoping that they decide to join our managed influence service. Same thing with Ryan, um, you know, and Meredith for you too, uh, you are already so far, all three of you are so far down the road because every episode you put in the can, every episode that you put out into the marketplace, all of the sudden you are that much more credible than anybody else because so many financial services professionals are not doing this yet. And every time you submit a video, you drop a podcast, you put it on your website, you do a social media post or a blog, when somebody looks for you, you are going to find out very, very quickly that you have so much more. What we refer to as social proof. Let's just call it social proof. It's not that we coined that term, but it's social proof, everybody. And the social proof is what you need to build credibility at scale. So number one, you stop being the best kept secret in your area. And number two, you accelerate your influence. You stop talking to skeptics and you start talking to fans. And with that, Jessica, you got anything else for our audience? Just a huge thank you to our podcasters again for volunteering. Amazing work. Please keep it up. And thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk soon. Bye, everybody.